Welcome to Pitch with the Professor, the show where a real statistics professor gives you sports betting tips. I'm your host, Professor Sides, and I've built a set of mathematical models named Sideline that predict various sports outcomes. Know more about the models in the course of this episode, set to cover five Major League Baseball games scheduled to be played on Friday, April 7th, 2023. Geeching here, check out the webpage on the banner. It's www.pitchtheprofessor.com slash new for some explanations and community rules. Also, if you're interested in projections and picks for every single game, sign up on Dub Club. That link is in the show description. But even if you're not there, still thrilled that you are here. Remember that sports are predictable, so the discussion of this show projects a typical game but does not try to forecast it to a T, as that would be a foolish and impossible goal. We'll take a long-term view on here and don't get distracted. When weird things happen, sometimes pitchers can't make it out of the first few innings. Sometimes that works for us. In the case of Lance Lynn, we had the Giants here on Thursday afternoon as the A-plus play of the day. If you're over with us on Dub Club, that was an easy cash. You get that good variance. Well, sometimes you get that bad variance. You just never know. It all balances out in the long run. That's the view we take around here. We don't get distracted about one game. We take a look at the totality. So the idea being what I'm always saying, please understand the good and bad variance will occur. So as much as I'd like to say it will be profitable each and every day, that is an impossible reality for any gambler. Just a reminder here, covering five games, one of these games, maybe two, is going to be completely way off because weird things happen. One or two of them is going to be way easy money because of weird things that we can't predict happening. So, again, it's all about the totality. Starting off good this baseball season. Hopefully we can continue it again. Recording here on Thursday afternoon, so a little bit unsure of how Thursday's games are going. But so far, it looks like we're going to get – one of our A-grade winners in the afternoon with the Blue Jays and the A-plus play of the day, as I mentioned, the Giants. So looking like a good Thursday so far for us. Hopefully it continues the rest of the night. But on to Friday's games. But before we do that, some reminders. Please hit that like button if you're on YouTube. Also, if you aren't yet, please consider subscribing or following. It's free. And if you turn on notifications, you won't miss any of the college basketball, MLB, or college football content that this channel provides. Reminder, I have A-grade Monday Night Plays returning four units. That is the risk plus win amount will equal four. That way, you risk proportionally more on favorites and dogs. We might risk eight tenths of a unit or 1.2 or 2.3 or whatever. We just let the math do it that way. It scales for us. We don't have to consider a half unit, three quarters of a unit, a unit and a half. We don't have to worry about that. The math just takes care of it for us and it kind of scales things in a way that I like. B grade plays, I have returning three units, C grade plays, returning two, and then those A plus plays of the day return five. But like I'm always talking about with the picks, with the suggestions, with the totals, and with the scaling, take what you like. And leave the rest. We we'll start off with some afternoon games here on a Friday. An unusual occurrence. We've got a bunch of rainouts for opening day, push to Friday, and of course, the Cubbies, who have to be among your favorite teams as a sports game, but just because they provide us with a lot of Friday afternoon baseball. And do it again here, playing the Rangers. Just take the Rangers at even money here as a B grade pick. The model says this should be Rangers minus 104, so a little bit of value here backing. My hometown team from Arlington. Of course, I live just up the road from there. Well, it says they went 51% of the time. I am not a Rangers fan. Of course, I'm an Astros fan, if you know this. So I don't love backing the Rangers. But just like we did in the first game, backing Nathan Evaldi, I don't think he's that bad. I think he hit around a little bit, but his underlying metrics were good in that first start. Against Marcus Stroman, I think it's a wash with regards to starting pitchers. I think both these guys are pretty good. I don't think either one of them uh, you know, is better than the other. I think they're both good pitchers. Uh, both bullpens, I think, are both pretty bad. I think it's kind of a wash. I think the difference is the Rangers offense is pretty league average and the Cubs offense. I just don't have a lot of faith, and I have them as well below average. They're not quite as bad as, uh, you know, the Royals offense, maybe the Tigers offense, some of these weaker offenses in baseball, uh, you know, Nationals offense. But but they're, they're still not very good, and the Rangers offense – should overcome the home foot advantage that the Cubs get. So I'm going to back the Rangers here at even money. Again, anything with a plus in front of it or slight minus odds is pretty good value on the Rangers. If it were to get out to plus 104, that would be an A grade according to sideline. No total on this one. It's fun to talk about games at Wrigley here. For those of you who are unaware, they tend to not post the totals on this game, on Cubs homes games until the morning of. The reason why is that Wrigley Field is the most sensitive part to wind. Why is that? It's because they don't have giant grandstands and the bleachers. So other parks get a lot of wind as well, but the wind matters more in Wrigley than any other park in the country. And so the direction, 
direction of that wind really matters and the strength of that wind really matters. Obviously, it's kind of high and variable in Chicago. So they tend to just not put a total up until the day of the game. So it's hard for us on the night before to get a good look at the total just because we don't know exactly what the wind will do. Uh, and, and again, it matters. It matters in every park, but it really matters there in Wrigley. Right now, the model is projecting winds blowing in from right center field at double digit miles per hour and a chilly day. So the projected total in this game, according to Silent, is 5.8. The bullpits aren't very good, but temperatures in the 40s in that park, wind blowing in, this sets up to be a two to one type of ball game, not a lot of runs. So unless you're seeing a total of five and a half, I probably would be playing under in this one because the ball while carrying more across major league baseball this year, just not going to carry very well in these conditions. They're at Wrigley here on Friday afternoon. 305 Eastern Yankees at the Orioles going to back the home Orioles here at plus one Oh five with an a grade play model says this should be Orioles. Minus 106, so anything that's plus 102 or better qualifies as an A grade. So if you're looking at even money, it's kind of a B-plus grade. Here with these plus odds in the Orioles, just too good to pass up for the home team. I think the Yankees' offense is a little bit better than this Orioles' offense, but I like uh, the Orioles' bullpen. It's, it's It can hang right in there with the Yankees' bullpen. And starting pitcher-wise, I think both of these guys are just very average. Neither one of them looked good in their first outing. Neither one of them making it past the fourth inning, both of them giving up a ton of runs. The underlying metrics were scary for both of them, but I don't think either one of these pitchers is bad necessarily. I think this is a case of two pretty even teams. Again, Yankees may be slightly better, but in Baltimore, I think the Orioles got a chance to win this. Model says they won 51.5% of the time. So again, plus odds just too good to back up, just too good to pass up here on Baltimore. They seem to have the Yankees number last year. I don't really think that means much. I don't really think that translates anywhere. Uh, you know, it's just that I think last year you saw the Orioles kind of put it together and becoming a solid baseball team. And I think that's what we're going to see from them this year. They're nothing special, but they're going to be pretty decent. They've got a decent offense. They're, you know, got a great catcher and that really helps out uh, these days in baseball. You saw that with Buster Posey, of course, with the Giants the year before when Posey took the year off because COVID Giants were terrible. He comes back. They're great. He leaves. They're terrible. So, I mean, you could just see how much a catcher matters there in the world. Of course, got that good bullpen. I think this is a tight contest, plus odds in the Orioles. Again, a great investment, a great according to the model. No rain in the forecast here in Baltimore. Temperature around 60 degrees, wind blowing in 5 to 10 miles an hour, starting with shifting towards across the field as it goes down, as it goes into the game. Model projects 7.4 runs. We have seen, again, more scoring in baseball, so I'm not diving into this under, but if you're getting an under nine, that's probably too good to pass up as well as it just seems unlikely to be a runaway type contest in a park in Baltimore that's become more of a pitcher friendly park now that they've moved the left field fence back uh, than it used to be. And of course in the summer when it gets really hot in Baltimore, the ball tends to fly, but at 60 degrees and the wind blowing in, it's not going to really fly out. So uh, with the good bullpens, I trust these pitchers do better than the first time kind of lean the under, but again, love the Orioles here at plus odds. 4.10 p.m. Eastern, Ashes with the Twins. Going to grab the Ashes here at even money. Only a C-grade pick, as the model says, this should be Twins minus 102. So you're basically talking that the model says this is a straight coin toss game. So let's grab the even money, or if you can find them, plus odds with the Astros here. If it gets up to plus 110, that qualifies as an A-grade on Houston. Remember, there's not a lot of difference in the numbers that become big differences in probabilities around 100. So uh, every cent matters a lot more with regards to the actual value that you're getting with regards to winning the bet from a probability standpoint around even money as it tails off and that changes in, in bigger numbers. So only up to plus one, only need one dime better to get this to an A grade for the Astros. So if, if people start betting on the twins and you get a better price than the Astros, I like it a little bit more. Again, it kind of feel like I did about the first two games here, taking plus odds or even money. I think there's a bunch of these coin toss games. I think this is another one. Model says coin toss. I could not agree more. Astros is probably the better team in this situation, but in Minnesota, who the heck knows what's going to happen. Weather should be huh, nice, at least compared to what they would have played in in Thursday had they not pushed it back. Upper 40s. Winds will be blowing in at about 5 to 10 miles an hour because that the model projects a total of 6.7. So another chilly day. Not expecting a ton of runs. So under eight would be the model's lean here, again, just because of the weather situation mattering a lot with how much the ball carries 
both these bullpens are pretty good. Both these starting pitchers are pretty decent. I have them pretty close to each other. Sonny Gray's a little bit better than Jose Arquiti, but not by a ton. Obviously, if you look at the first start, Gray went five innings and didn't give up a run. Arquiti went four innings and gave up a few, but the underlying metrics for Gray were pretty terrible in that start, which kind of just goes back to, I don't think he's that great. I think he's a solid pitcher. I think Arquiti's a solid pitcher. I don't think either one of them are great. I don't think either one of them are bad. I think it's pretty much a wash there. It's pretty much a wash with the bullpens. The Twins might have a little bit more strength the back three, but both bullpens are pretty good. Uh, really, the difference is that the Twins' average is just – offense is just average, whereas the Astros' offense, even without Altuve, still grades out to be pretty good. They did struggle in a couple of those games here uh, in that opening homestand, but – uh, even in you know the extra inning game they lost, they still put up six runs. So I, I think the offense is still fine. Obviously, it misses something without Altuve and Brantley in the lineup, but it's still a good offense. It just goes from good to great with those guys back. So the Astros' offense here, I think, gives them a chance. Again, plus odds, even money, a pretty solid investment here in the Astros. Again, model only gives it a C grade, uh, but once it gets to plus 105, it gets to a B and plus 110 and A grade. And again, the model also leans under. To some night games. Let's go back to Colorado for the Nats and Rockies. Game being played right now for day one, so I don't know how we did on that one. But for game two, I'm actually going to back the Nationals here. First time all season. I want to talk about this game because it might be the only time we back the Nationals all season. That's probably not true at 162 games. But the model does not like this Nationals team. Their bullpen is garbage. Their offense is garbage. But here's the thing is the Rockies offense not very good either. and Their bullpen also not very good. I don't think either one of these teams is very good. I think the benefit here and the reason I'm back in the Nats at a B grade here on Friday. First off, it's the plus odds, which is nice. Get another coin toss game. Call Friday the coin toss game. Take all the plus odds, and it'll rack up some wins for you and a little bit of profit there in the long run. You know, it's kind of what we're playing here. But mainly on this one, I'm going to isolate the pitching matchup. McKenzie Gore and Jose Urena. I think McKenzie Gore is a pretty good pitcher. Model says he's slightly below league average, but I think he's got a lot of upside. I really like what the kid did in his first start, and I like what I've seen from him as his pedigree versus Jose Urena, who I have zero faith in whatsoever. He got lit up in his first start on the road, and I think he's going to get lit up all season. He's one of the worst pitchers in my database, and that's the big difference because neither bullpen's very good, neither offense is very good. And the Rockies are a little bit right-handed heavy, so they're going to benefit facing a lefty and Gore, but I just think the difference between McKenzie Gore and Jose Urena is really large. Only giving it a B grade, model needs a larger price to get to an A, is asking uh, for something closer to... Uh, plus 112 before it gets to an A grade. So at least a plus 110, probably closer to plus 115 if, if you're at a book that goes in fives. Even if it got to plus 115, it's hard to give this a, a firm B grade. In general, any game in course, it's hard to give it an A grade just because the way that part can play is so crazy. It's hard to be overly confident on anything because anything can happen there. A pitcher like Gore can come in there. I assume he's never pitched in Coors Field. He might have had a start there, pitched a little bit when he was with San Diego last year, but he also missed most of last season being injured. He hasn't pitched a lot in the big leagues. So I'm assuming he hasn't pitched there. If he has, it's been very, very, very little. Sometimes these guys go there their first start, and they just don't do well because the altitude, the way they grip the ball, the movement, everything changes. Some guys, guys go on the road, and they do great there. That It doesn't seem to matter because the way their stuff works. You just never really know with Coors. So again, Mollo gives it a B grade, and I tend to agree that I like backing the Nats at plus odds because I think they have the much better starting pitch and while the Rockies get a boost for home field, like I mentioned yesterday, they have the largest home field advantage in baseball. The difference is here, I just think the starting pitcher edge is way too much to overcome, and I love backing the Nats here. One of the few times I'm going to say that all season because I really like McKenzie Gore. Total on this one's really interesting. Model would lean under. I'm seeing a total of 11. I have no faith in Urena keeping the ball in the yard or preventing doubles off the wall in that park, but the model only projects 9.6. And the reason why the winds be blowing in around five miles an hour and the temperature, if there are going to be runs, it's going to be more likely to be early than late. We're going to start off in the mid sixties, a really nice night at first pitch. But when that sun goes down in Denver, we're going to be in the low forties. So it's going to get really cold, really quick. And that ball's not going to carry. Now that's not going to affect the total quite as much as it would in most parks. As I mentioned yesterday, the biggest thing about course isn't actually the home runs. There are a lot of home runs there because the thin air, but there are also a lot of doubles and triples because they built a really big park knowing there was thin air. So the fact that the ball is not going to carry isn't going to necessarily mean there aren't going to be runs. It just means it's going to be a little bit harder because the ball is just going to hold up a little bit 
more more of those fly balls that would have been doubles are going to be more outs. Home runs are going to be doubles, that sort of thing. So model would lean under in this game. Unders at Coors Field, you never really know about totals, of course. But in general, as long as the Rockies go to the bullpen relatively quickly, and they did in Urena's last start, they went to him in the third inning, getting to 11 runs isn't going to be the easiest thing on a night like this, especially early on. I would not be taking the first five under absolutely would not be looking at that, but uh, weathering the storm early on when it's 65 degrees and that ball carries a little bit better is going to be the key. And then after that, it's going to be a lot harder to score runs later on. So under might be a way to look, but again, also liking the nationals at plus odds. And then wrapping us up in the light spot, Dodgers, the Diamondbacks, B grade pick on the Dodgers minus 205. Look, the model's going to give this a B grade, but personally, I love this. I'd be all over it. I'd be putting this in a money land parlay if that's your thing. Again, as I always talk about, plays that are good by themselves are good in parlays. Plays that are bad by themselves are not good in parlays. They don't get magically better because they're in a parlay. It's all about the value. Minus 205 is way too short of a price in this game, in my opinion. The model says it should be Dodgers minus 207, but personally, it's just hard to quantify how bad Matt and Bumgarner has gotten how much he's fallen off and just how good Clayton Kershaw still is. The model's taking a more tentative stance on him, thinking that he's going to slowly start to lose it as he gets older, but he hasn't lost it yet at all, I don't think. And against a below-average Diamondbacks offense, uh, that is also pretty left-handed heavy that sets up to favor Kershaw in this matchup being a lefty. I think there's almost no chance the Diamondbacks win this game. If you're in the low 200s, this is a really good play. Again, don't put them in every money line parlay that you're going to do. Keep it to one, you know, one team per parlay, right? Don't don't spread out too thin because then you're putting all your eggs in one basket. And sports are weird in general. You never know what's going to happen. But Dodgers minus two or five, whether you're doing it by itself or putting it in a parlay, either one I think makes a lot of sense because Kershaw versus Bumgarner, we backed Kershaw in that first game and it worked out in this matchup. And I want to do it again. I see no reason why Kershaw can't dominate the Diamondbacks just like he did before. And the Dodgers are going to hammer Bumgarner, just like they did before, too. I don't really see much difference in that. The starting pitcher discrepancy here, as Cousin Jerry mentioned yesterday in one of the games, just light years between these two guys. Weather should be really nice in Arizona. I'm projecting another night of open roof, 80 degrees to start, low 70s to close, slight breeze. It should be really nice weather. Model projects a total of 8.8, .8, actual totals 8.5. I would not be touching the total here because I think the Dodgers run away. You can also play them on the run line as well. Again, I'm sticking to money lines. That's where I've had more success. If you have more success with run lines, I don't think that's a bad idea. If you're going to play it on the money line, play it on the run line or vice versa. It's probably about the same in most cases. Your edge isn't changing a ton between the two. So it's really personal preference. I'm going to stick to the money line. And again, if you're doing parlays uh, and you have like one big money line parlay where you pick your favorite two games or three games or something, Dodgers would definitely be it. Again, model only gives it a B grade, but I think it's a fantastic investment back in Kershaw as good as he's looked um, always against a guy like Bumgarner, who hasn't looked good in a long time. He's still hanging on. He's just got way too many innings under his belt uh, to handle the Dodgers. Couldn't handle him the first time out. I don't think he's going to handle him here either. And that's all I've got for you. Thanks for tuning in this episode of Pitch the Professor. Don't forget to subscribe so you can show all the sports betting content around this channel. Drop right into your feed. And I'll be back again tomorrow to talk about Saturday's baseball slate. But until then, as always, best of luck. And remember, you can eat your betting money, but please don't bet your eating money.